Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silverquill. Someone in this room is a changeling. Dun, dun, dun. I just don't know who. Hmm. Can the audience figure out who is the changeling? No, totally not. And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Songs. Yes, I am the Sapphire. I, I totally know what I'm doing or something. Something, something gems. Something, something dark side. Something, something obscure reference that Silver somehow doesn't get. I don't know. Is this how it works? I don't trust her. She seems different. Really? She seems like the same as every other podcast. hey <laughs> Ha ha ha! Of course I am! And also, guest hosting for this week is Wills. Greetings, normal reviewers. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, absolutely just fine. Late to be with you folks on this reviewing show of reviewing. Yes, that is what they do here is review things and totally not suck out the love out of you. No, that would be bad. Um, okay. I think that's a guy. Probably not. I still have my eye on the blue one. Okay, sure, whatever. (laughs) <laughs> but anywho, by that little conversation, you can guess that we're going to review Season 6, Episode 16, The Times They Are a Changeling, written by... Who cares? Kevin Brooke and Chris Dockwatt. I think they do care. I think they want to know if they're being praised for their work. Yes, or criticized for their work. Sapi, you you have a really negative outlook on life. You could be the changeling. Well, just because I have a negative outlook on life doesn't mean I'm a changeling. I mean, look at Silver. He's cynical as hell. Yes, but he gives praise where it needs to be. Or was he be. never the real hippogriff? Hey, you can't fake this kind of awesomeness. <laughs> hmm. Or maybe he absorbed the awesomeness from someone else. From this chat group? I think not. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you got us there. Excuse me, princess. <laughs> Uh, well, we do know that he hangs out with Dr. Wolf, Josh Haber, um, who else? Um, Ty and Daiga. Josh, jo- Josh Haber. Hey, I hang out with Ty. Oh, yeah. not Josh. Uh, I the other Josh. Josh Scorcher. Yeah. Josh Scorcher. Why'd you say Haber? Because I was reading <laughs> yeah. his name yesterday. Haber was never cool. There's, I think there's like also a height difference between the two. <laughs> uh, well, I don't want people thinking I'm hanging out with the show staff now. My bad, my <laughs> bad. You're too cool to hang out with us now. Oh, uh, no, somehow people get all hipster on you. It's like, you're hanging out with, pe- with people who work on the show. That makes you a sellout, man. <laughs> I used to believe in you. Well, Good. really, no. <laughs> uh, but Cha. besides that, um, fool, derps. I'm turning a Bill and Ted on me. <laughs> Uh, let's move on. So in this episode, Twilight Sparkle, Starlight Glimmer, and Spike travel to the Crystal Empire and find the Crystal Ponies in a panic over a possible changeling spy. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so everyone's in a tizzy about yep, yep. there could be a changeling about, which begs the question, if they've been gone for thousands of years, did they just get catched up on what changelings are, or did changelings exist back when the Crystal Empire was around as well? Depends on which continuity you want to consult. Uh, yep. But anywho, before we officially move on, let's go for first impressions and let's go with Silver. What do you think, man? I enjoyed this. I, I was pleased that this is a, another really good Spike episode. Words that I never thought I'd understand. <laughs> Spike does an admirable job. I mean, he's, he's struggling with his own social standing versus what needs to be done for his friend and, we all think, oh, immediately he should just back up his friend. That's the right thing to do. But this is a guy who hasn't gotten a lot of respect, and now suddenly he's the hero of this entire nation. It's hard to stand up, especially to your peers and elder siblings, in a sense, when doing the right thing. So I can't fault Spike for stumbling as long as he rallied by the end. Thorax is a little bit more of a mixed bag. We have finally a changeling who's nice. But this, coupled with other episodes, makes me wonder how committed the show was to really exploring this idea of a good changeling. And when you say a couple of other episodes, you mean the season finale, right? Unless I missed an episode, yeah. (laughs) Yes. No, I just had to be clear, because when this episode comes out, that episode is already aired. So 
uh, this this is the most complex part of the thing. I, I'll touch it when we go to full reviews. But this is first impressions. Ooh, ooh! Do you want to touch it? <laughs> no, you. Touch it. No. You. Touch, touch, no. touch. Touch, 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 touch. So, Poke it, Norman. Poke it. Okay. 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 This is a museum. You're not allowed to touch it just yet. Pop it. <laughs> Twist it. Pull it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Pass it. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, I know that's not silver because he wouldn't make a reference of today's media. Hey, I could be hip, yo. Yeah. For shizzle. <laughs> oh, God, not this again. Uh... But anywho, um, is that it, Silva? I think that is it. I've managed to upset Sapphire. Yeah. My work here is done. Yeah. Or am I Sapphire? Dun, dun, dun. Indeed. Oh, wait, I can be Sapphire because I just admit I'm not. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Seppi, what about you? What's your thoughts on this? This episode is a bit of a mixed bag for me. I don't really hate it, but I don't really like it either, if that makes any sense. Like, I don't mind this episode. I think my only real issues are with Thorax, because, what the hell, it's a nice changeling. I want him to be evil and stuff. And then, yeah, Norman, like you said, the season finale came along, and I'm still just as upset as ever. My Chrissy B over here in the corner looks down upon this episode with great disappointment. I don't like Thorax as much. I mean, I get the concept of wanting to be... Nice in a nation where everybody's so evil and crap, but I don't know. It doesn't sit well with me, especially with these changelings. It gives me a bad feeling that in the future there will be reformation and that actually came true. But I do like this in the sense of the Spike aspect. Like I said, Spike hasn't really had any good episodes up until this season. I don't think he's had a bad episode this whole entire season, actually. Well, he's he's had two episodes. I mean, granted, that's a small number, but... Who cares? Is. He's actually been a good character this season compared to every other season. Yes, th- yes this is a much better outing than Princess Spike. Well, not really Legends of Everfree, but still, you get my point. Ever what now? You know, Legends of Everfree. We reviewed that movie. Yes. Yes, and now I have set it aside in my mind's warehouse to be forgotten. (laughs) Oh. Well, that's Dog Spike, not not, not Cannon Spike. Yes, that is also true. Different will spike at the same time, too. But, Wills, what about you, man? Well, I guess when it comes to this episode, it's like, oh! I felt something. Like thousands of head cannons screaming out, and then we're silenced. That's what this episode was for me. As a, as a fanfic writer and a fanfic reader, just watching all these changeling head cannons be shot out of the sky like an anti-aircraft gun <laughs> piloting out a bunch of Zeppelin blimps. Uh, oh, they came out of the air! Well, the or, cannon death star played a part in this. <laughs> did anyone, uh, did anyone ride their head cannon down like in Doctor Strangelove? Yeah! <laughs> Probably! <laughs> Oh uh, well. Oh, okay. probably. But oh, oh, Safi, but don't, don't pretend you got that reference, Safi. Doctor Strange, I still have yet to see the movie because it hasn't come out in theaters yet. Uh... Wrong, Doctor Strange, love. <laughs> Wrong, Doctor Strange. I want to see that movie. Shush. Ah. Although, yeah. although now, now I want a com- now I want to see Benedict Cumberpatch ride a nuclear bomb. <laughs> uh... Crud, so do I. <laughs> And I wasn't pretending, God. Wills, um, that's it? Or oh, just more? D- just be, aside from the head cannons being absolutely destroyed, this episode I have a love-hate relationship with, uh, probably, I- I'd say I'm more positive than in, in Sapphire's part. I think it opened up some holes in at least theory, but of course it's nothing we can't guesswork on about these small holes that they've made in uh, how they've explained the story of Changelings. But as it comes down to, you know, Spike in this episode, I mean, he was top tier. I mean, I was amazed when this whole season started and how Spike was being really a good guide for Starlight Glimmer. But then to see him continue this aspect, even to this episode, I mean, yeah, he makes a mistake, but he's still a kid. And apparently you can fix trauma and prejudice and anything by singing a song. Which is kind of both disheartening and kind of sad because I really wish it was like that in real life right now. Uh, but sadly it's not. 
And as for me, well, this episode is pretty interesting because, well, I haven't seen spoilers for it, except for those uh, Discovery Channel kind of spoilers where they show everything in one go. Yeah, thanks Discovery. But other than that, I do like this one. The angle where you have a nice change link coming up. Well, kind of, we're, we're already spoiling it, but... um the angle where we have a nice changeling appears here and trying to feed off the Crystal Empire's love assets and whatnot. And also we have Spike here being, well, he said it himself that he's a celebrity in the Crystal Empire. And well, friend by association in this kind of case is kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. Um, my thoughts on first impressions are all over the place. I do like this one. The song was not bad. But other than that, I, I guess we can go f- full on reviewing on this one. Um, so if you guys at home have not seen this episode yet, uh, pause it here and go watch it first. And if you have, welcome back. So we start off the episode with our heroes, that is Twilight, Starlight and Spike in the train, the Friendship Express, going to the Crystal... No, the Exposition Express. Ah, yes, sorry. Is the Exposition Express... It has a strange power over ponies. Ah, yes. You sit down and suddenly you need to summarize the whole life up until that point. <laughs> uh, but but still, but still, uh, we get our heroes in the train heading off to the Crystal Empire. And Twilight's being really giddy about meeting with her niece, um, Flurry Heart, and seeing how... She's, well, it's been so wild. I bet she's gone big. I wouldn't even recognize her and whatnot. And Starlight just straight up says, um, Twilight, she's the only kid that they have and she's an alicorn. I'm sure you'll be able to recognize her. Not to mention her model hasn't changed one iota. <laughs> oh, true that. Hey, if the I'll... Cutie Mark Crusaders don't change in six years, <laughs> I expect that baby to stay the same for an EI. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Other than that, um, everyone's excited to just be in the Crystal Empire. Starlight gets to meet her boyfriend, Twilight gets to meet her niece and family members, and Spike is tagging along because he wants to meet the family members too, because he's part of the family and not the family dog. That's our hope. Oh, yep. <laughs> uh, yep. And at the same time too, we get to see him, well, dressed funny. Anybody know why? Because he's a celebrity, also a changeling. <gasps> da, da, da. Oh no, he's a changeling. Will someone please help us? Oh no. Oh no. Who's going to give Maybe Spike any love? Changeling with that blatant reaction. Yeah, but honestly, um, Spike's just there to kind of, well, be incognito, being disguising, like he doesn't want to be mobbed, like that ever happened. Yeah, it's actually kind of nice. Um, you know, we've had good characterization of Spike so far in this season, and well, well, you can play it off for laughs of <laughs> Spike being silly. At the same time, you know, this character actually does want to just spend time with his family, and you know, he does get mobbed by the Crystal Pony. So if he just wants to, you know, not make a big deal out of it, it's actually kind of smart for this little kid to go out of his way to. Try and not make a scene. Yeah. Very grown up of him. Yeah, that's cool. Though he has to work on his acting skills. Who is Spike? I don't know Spike. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Golly gee, Wilbur. <laughs> and that wig. Oh, that orange fluffy wig. It's so it's fluffy. fluffy. It's so fluffy. I want to pet it and then rip it off and then expose him. Wow. Just for spite. Wow. You, hey. you're, you're mean. Yes, okay. yes, I am. I think I've we've... always been me, Norman. Yes, we've ruled out Safi as the changeling. Yeah, yeah. Any good changeling would be yeah. that mean. <laughs> Only the real Safi can be that mean. Uh, unless yep. it was yep. a changeling that fell off of pain <laughs> instead of love. Well, then we're definitely in fanfic territory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my. It would well, go into some pretty dark... Oh, God, that would be totally MSL. W. But anywho... Oh, trust me, people have gone that route, but we're not going that way! Yes, but well, anywho... <laughs> we okay. better not be. This is the MBS show. Moving hastily on. Yes, thank you. Uh, we arrive at the Crystal Empire train station, where nobody's there to greet them, and 
Spike doesn't need the disguise after all. And wondering where is everybody because the town is a barren wasteland of nothingness. Just like the Crystal Empire. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> I thought yeah. you said that so fast. I thought you said Sapphire. Oh yay, Crystal Empire. <laughs> yes. Uh, One thing I forgot to touch on my uh, first impressions impressions on this. I think this is the best episode that the Crystal Empire was ever featured in. Oh, true that too. Although that's may not, that still may not be much of an endorsement. Uh, also true. Yeah, really. Especially if they're looking for freaking changes inside like a tiny, uh, you know, what was it? Crevice. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a little pot with a. Lid. Oh, you're That's, talking about that. I one. should know what this is, but it's not rolling off the Vos? top of my head. An urn? Sure, why not? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she doesn't care. So anyway, um, once Spike takes off his disguise, he got mobbed. Well, who knew he had celebrity power? Yay! He does. Yay! It's, it is a burden heavy to bear. Yes. It's like a magnet. <laughs> take off the disguise. <laughs> Surrounded by fans. But he's thinking, like, why can't it be a rarity magnet? <laughs> oh, that fancy will never happen, Spike. Uh, but once they see Starlight and Twilight, they wonder, are they the real pony? Or is Spike even a real pony? Run! And wow, that was really confusing. None being said. No info was given for this. Until we meet up with the Royals. Where Spike, being his cocky self, tries to impress the guards with his charm and failing because the guards are being really, really careful about this. And Guards doing their jobs? Inconceivable. I know. In Equestria, that too. But after that, we see the royals coming in and doing the secret handshake. Uh, the yes. Secret butt shake. Oh, yes. It's a butt shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your booty. Shake your booty. Shake your booty. Shake your booty. Steffi, what we're doing is referencing the Shake Your Booty, which was a popular song back in the day. Yes, I know what that song is. <laughs> but can can, can we just shake, appreciate... Shake <laughs> appreciate what? Can we just appreciate for a moment? In a matter of national security, it comes down to doing a silly childhood dance. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I mean, we have two key codes to protect our nuclear arsenal. and to, Oh, no, protect all the love in this kingdom? A childhood dance. <laughs> but it works. Oh, um, I, I shudder to think what the passcode is. What is it, like some secret hoof shake or something in order to get into the armory? Actually, I'm more picturing our, our either candidate having to do that dance to get into the nuclear arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm pretty sure Hillary would throw her hip out. <laughs> in the news today, America lost its nuclear supply due to the fact that uh, neither candidate has any jiggy. <laughs> President Obama has been called back into the office because he's got real style. Yo. And he flaunts it like he's got it. Wiggity whack. Oh, gosh. Uh, but anywho. Don't. Please don't. But anywho, once they kind of, uh, verify who they are, they kind of mingle and ask what's going on. And the reason is, there's a, cha- there's a change thing in me boot. In your boot? What? Uh, in a different set of boots. I think he's trying to make a Toy Story reference. Yes. What's that a yeah. boot? <laughs> but anywho. <clears throat> What's that a boot? Oh, don't you know. <laughs> uh, but anywho. There, there's a snake in the book. It's a snake in the shape of a beetle juicy in. But anywho. Can we talk real quick about their so-called security measures? Oh, yeah. Which is the aforementioned butt shaking. You give You'd think after <laughs> what one changeling invasion, they'd have something going to sweep for for false identities. A little magic spell. I mean, we saw in the battle with the, when the changelings invaded, Twilight could force them back into their changeling form. That was just raw magic. Yeah, she just basically wave blasted the dude. Wave blast. Well, as the one I remember, she pinned it down. Ran a beam over it, it reverted, and it hissed at her, so then she KO'd it. It's like, I want to make sure this friend who was attacking me is actually not my friend. And it's just like, so did no one think to, like, do a little periodic scan to make sure, you know, you're not a changeling? Actually, I'm kind of amazed in the entire time the uh, Crystal Empire has existed, this 
the crystal heart, this beacon of light and love, it should be like a changeling ma- magnet. Like, why aren't there a hundred of changelings swarming around the thing like swarming African bees just in a giant bzzz, and Chrissy just going, mine, 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 all mine. <laughs> well, mine. Well, you know, you know, uh, that scene in A Bug's Life where they're heading into the light. Oh, it's so beautiful. It, oh, don't go into the light. Don't go into the light. Zap. <laughs> no! Well, it's kind of like that. <laughs> you get you, you get too close and you find out that the crystal heart is actually just a giant bug zap. Oh, gosh. And the entire tower is shaped like, yeah, it, like, it is shaped like a bug zapper. I'm going to clean funny. up the carapaces everywhere. <laughs> uh, but with the security measure in this kingdom, I'm sure they're, they'll do fine. I'm sure of it because you got sunburst. So, yeah, they'll fine. They'll fine. Oh, that, it, you, they have sunburst. Shining armor and cadence. No faith whatsoever in their abilities. <laughs> uh, well, they already they already lost once to the changelings, and now all they have is velvet rage against them. Doesn't mean they got smarter. I mean, uh, but that's besides the point. But much. before we carry on, before we carry on, I, I need to ask the group as a collective mind here: Do we want to hint on the season finale here because it does play a big part in this? Or should we avoid it altogether? Well, I think it's the, I think anyway, and it's probably out by now by the time this episode comes out. So yeah, I'd like to talk about it, but uh, I I think it goes the other way around. This sets up a lot of key elements for the uh, for the season finale. Unfortunately, having seen the finale, this one takes on this episode might actually take on a bit of a bittersweet note as a result. Mm, True that too. I will talk about that. I'm fine with us discussing it. I mean, as as, Sil- oh, as Silver said, it does change. Oh yeah, I saw the I, I saw the leaked UK episodes, yeah. so I saw everything early and out of yeah, order. So we'll kind e- of talk a bit about it, but not really in depth about the whole detail. Like we won't go into detail. We'll just point out certain aspects when needed to. So okay, that's agreed. We'll just uh, we'll just talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Oh baby! <laughs> but anywho. Um, Spike wants to join. I'm sorry, Silver. We're not in Funky Town. We're in the Crystal Empire. It can be funky. Uh, if I may continue, uh, we have Spike wanting to join the guards on the patrol, searching for the changeling because he's a big macho dragon and he's not afraid of anything. Oh, you. So yeah, I ain't afraid of no changeling. <laughs> can we just compliment the the Crystal Guard for a minute? Because they're dopes. Let's not pretend they're not dopes. Oh, they're lovable dopes. But they are actually... Useful dopes. Yeah, they're, they're, they're being useful. They are actually going out and trying to find the changeling. Why they're looking in the frozen north when he could easily be in the town, I do mm-hmm. not know. But to be honest, when we're talking about searching for the changeling, in terms of what they're doing, it's technically so wrong. You don't do this kind of procedure because... It's all wrong. What you should do is do a grid-based search and with a unicorn. They be all Pegasio and they don't have the magic to scan. And you wanna, and you... No, don't even And you want to be in at least groups of three or more because if you're with pairs, one of you could get separated from the other and now it's one versus one. Whereas if you have three people, it's a guaranteed always two person advantage against a one opponent. And also if you separate your team, Oh, you got no idea if the other person is a changeling and got kidnapped and changeling took over their place and whatnot. Yeah, so always have a unicorn on standby to scan. But that's besides the point because we're already at the north. The frozen north. What are they doing there? Why are they searching for changeling? And why are they taking commands from Spike? Because he is the big shot hero. Look at me! Look at me! I am hero! Hail the conquering hero! Ba-na-na-na-na-na-na! Spike's past experiences are allowing him to get away with some of his bossiness towards these guys, and that leads them to, well, splitting up, of course. <laughs> if he were the changeling, that'd be his chance to pick them all off one by one. Yep. And then we get into a much darker fic now. <laughs> <laughs> the next John Carpenter film. The Spike. The Link. <laughs> the Link. <laughs> da da but anywho, Spike kind of separates himself from the group, which is a very bad idea. And 
kind of falls into a icy cavern where he almost falls to his death. Almost. And he does this by interrogating a rock. That's got to be the worst way to go. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think he just wasn't taking anything for granted. <laughs> <sighs> but he to like, might have a chance. My percentage it's all shale and fell well. <laughs> uh, boys. But anywho, um, <laughs> bad puns aside, we see Spike um, saying that, oh, this is dumb and he wants to go back to the Crystal Empire and be warm. And shocks himself by, him, by seeing himself in a reflection of himself. Ooh, I have problems with this. Really, as someone who watched Ash vs. Evil Dead last night at the time of this recording, they ha- they used the same gag with Ash's shadow, which was yeah, hilarious. Yeah, true, but um, for me, when, he, when when I say problem with this, is that the changeling turned into a dragon. Yeah? Huh? I, I don't know, maybe this is hit canon playing a part because I only thought changeling could change into quadrupeds, not bipeds. Well, they wouldn't be much changelings if they couldn't fit in with every single thing on the planet, and as we discover later in this episode, you know, he can even transform into inanimate objects, so changelings can literally change into anything. Didn't then. we had the CMC Friends Forever or Micro Series where uh, they straight out said that a changeling can't change into inanimate objects? Was that me? Am I wrong? But this is where it comes back to what one of the directors of the show said. The comics are canon until we say otherwise. The show is the ultimate canon when it comes to it. So if something in the comics contradicts something in the show, the show trumps it. True, I do agree with that, but it's kind of a good place. In the comics, they mention about, they mention a creature called the Mimic, and whoever plays Dark Souls know what a Mimic is. Those are not friendly creatures. <laughs> Those are not friendly creatures. I played Star, I played uh, Star Ocean. Yeah. Got Mimics in that Star too. Ocean? What? Yeah. Video game. Video game, you youngin, is played on something called the PlayStation Wait, 2. Ocean? I thought that was on the Sega Dreamcast. Yeah. I never owned a PlayStation 2. Oh, you, you, you got it. Actually, it, or was it Star Pirates? It was like the last hurrah for the PlayStation mm, 2. Probably, I don't remember. But at least you guys know what the mimic is. It's not yeah. important. All I know is that somebody said Dark Souls, and now I can think of Bartholomew. Look, well, look, Norman, I, I hate I hate to break it mm-hmm. to you. But you're you're worried about quadru- quadrupeds and non peds and all that. It's a little pedantic. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but honestly, it's one of those things where it's bugging me a bit. But I can forgive it because it's yeah, not a big issue. If I let this eat at me, I never appreciate the episode for what it is. But yeah, it's, well, for what it is, it's an entertaining scene. Like you mentioned, um, the evil that reference kind of deal, <laughs> kind of fool, uh, kind of cool. Uh, the uh, the I'm a clone of this other person and pretend to be a mirror is a classic yep. gag in cartoons. Yep. Uh, didn't they do that for one Spider-Man commercial way back in the day where Baby Spider versus, uh, versus um, Big Spider? I don't know. Uh, that one I don't yeah, recall. Maybe it's... That was from Ultimate Spider-Man. Hmm. Oh, well. Oh. <laughs> Other than that, um, we discovered the Changeling. Ah, uh, Spike the Brave and Glorious finds the Changeling and... He runs off, rams into a stalagmite, and falls to his doom. Oh no, series over. Brave Sir Spike ran away, ran away and chickened out. <laughs> <laughs> brave, brave, brave Sir Spike, bravely ran away. Uh, but I think uh, he learned the uh, Holy Grail method of surviving. I don't know, Sir Peter and that didn't make it past the bridge, poor guy. Well, they didn't have a changeling to save <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, true that. That's very and true. And talking about saving Changeling, the Changeling saves Spike. And, oh, wow, we, we, we got our first introduction to this Changeling. This Changeling name is Torex. He's a nice Changeling. He's different from the rest. Ch-ch-ch-changing face is strange. Sorry, I had to make that reference in this review. And Torex here explains that from a very young age, he felt different. He didn't seem like the other Changeling. He felt like he was different. Rudolph the red nose changed him. Um, that, and he's nice. <laughs> and look at them larvar. Thorax the friendly changeling had a disposition that was weird. Uh, but yeah. I like this guy. <laughs> but look at them changelings. Like, they're cute. Can we have a lawnmower? No, I'm kidding. What? <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, grubs are adorable. I mean, they are just th- these little angry little hissy thingies, but they just get these cute little witty. They got these little weepers, these little grubby weepers. Oh, but then they start crawling, and you're just like, ugh, uncomfortable. Oh, and did you see how some of them it's were like even crawling through point. Chrysalis's holes? Just like the holes in her legs, they were crawling around. It's like, well, why do but, you think? She, why do you think she's their queen? She's like a natural jungle gym. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs play equipment? We have mommy. <laughs> <laughs> but this actually does beg. I mean, we 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 don't know is she their mother or is she just made from? Did she birth them? Is it magic? We'll never get that probably. But the thing is, it's implied that thorax is an aberration. So changelings are born evil then, or they're just born nasty, um, not essentially evil. They're so, born nasty. It's proven by the way they come out with all that goo all and over hissing. Them. Lots of his. Well, I, I, hey, you know, babies come out crying, all right, and those things are loud and annoying. But that doesn't mean that they aren't cute too. Well, you just you you get pushed out of where you've been. Someone slaps you on the butt. Of course, you're gonna start Except crying. Except if you're Chuck Norris. No, no, no. If well, there you just punch a lot of things. But <laughs> I was if, a happy baby when I was born. I don't want to hear any of that crap. But if you're, if the baby turns and hisses at, at the doctor who slapped it, the baby, <laughs> then you know you've probably got a little spawn of, de- of the devil. <laughs> I need a young just... priest and an old priest. <laughs> why, why are you old and young priest? I mean, seriously, wouldn't just two priests of any age be fine? I mean, why specifically a young and an old one? Are you expecting the old, are you expecting to use the old one and his heart give out? So that's why you have the young one as a standby? Exactly, it's the teacher type dynamic of the hero's journey. <laughs> and the old priest is all like, we go to do our duty, but I'm, I'm probably not going to make it, so good luck. And he was cast. only three days to retirement. <laughs> and he was going to meet his nieces and nephews for the first time. <clears throat> and he just won the lottery. <laughs> but then he gave out. He croaked. <laughs> so sad. Uh. God, how many more, de- how many more death flags can we see? Uh, he was at? wearing a red shirt. Okay. He's bereft, a stiff, <laughs> of no life. He is no more. He has ceased to be. <laughs> he has shuffled off his plane to join the choir. Invisible. <laughs> this is an ex-priest, and we have gone way off topic. I know, isn't it glorious? <laughs> Welcome to the NBS review. That's usually how the show works. Except this time, they're not picking on me. As much. But anywho. Well, give, give us time. Give us time, dear Safi. Uh, but anywho. Uh, dear Safi. Dear Safi. But anywho, uh, we go back to the larva cave where Torex explains where he's different, changeling Armin, and he was involved in the attack in the, in Cantalot, where he saw the main six battling the changeling, and with that level of friendship, he felt that it was not right to steal their love, and wanted to kind of share the love somehow, some possible way for shadowing not in the future. And Spike here felt, well, he felt for Torex and tries to make things right for him. I I, I do have to raise something. I'm, it's good that Torex saw the fight because if he'd seen how the main six framers threw Twilight under the bus and went to her brother's wedding without her, or That's... just, you know, abandon her completely to the mercy of the queen. I mean, that would just be like, oh, well, this is what friendship is. I mean, forget this. Yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why part one of Cantalot Wedding is my least favorite episode of the whole series. I get that they were mad and that they they were sort of storming out on Bachelor Twilight goofed bad. But the fact they went ahead with the wedding and didn't even give two thoughts to the, to the mayor who should be there. I like, Wow. You sold out your friend for a place in a wedding of someone you barely know. <laughs> uh, friendship is friendship is opportunistic. My little pony. <laughs> uh, but we we carry on. I used to wonder what friendship could be, my little pony, and then you all betrayed me. <laughs> I'm just saying that Thorax's account conveniently glosses over one of the low points. It's like, oh yeah, they. They were so united as they punched each other in the face. I think Twilight was working out some aggression issues yeah, in that yeah. fight. But still, uh, Torek was not there to see the whole thing happen. He he came in late. But uh, with you know, but with Spike's uh, act of kindness, Torek starts to go 
literally like and kind of sucky. And he says, "Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, whenever kindness happens, I I tend to act. I'm sorry." Which is yeah. not at all unfair. No. Right? If all it takes is one uh, act of kindness, and suddenly you're hissing and spitting at everyone, yeah, you probably shouldn't be near a cultural center. Yeah, but at the same time, too, he is hungry, so that is why he's kind of um, doing all that thing. And well, if trust me, being hungry is not fun. Well, just go to Manhattan. You'll have fewer random acts of kindness <laughs> there. Uh, true that. Ha, ha, New Yorker insults. But the Crystal the crystal Empire is like an all-you-can-eat buffet of love, so he'd be drawn to it. So can't, can't, all- can't fault a Ling for trying. It's an all-you-can-eat buffet of laziness. Ain't, ain't none of those ponies doing nothing. It's all it's all you can eat crystal shiny stuff with a hint of laziness. I don't know. It's my kind of place. But anyway, Spike... Uh, heads back to the castle and tells that he spotted the changeling and befriended it. And guard one and two laughs at him. Like, ah ha ha ha, Spike the Great and uh, the Great and Powerful is also a really good um, jokester. Ha ha ha. And Shining Armor comes in and says that changeling are no joke and they can't be nice. There's no such thing as a nice changeling. Grrr. I have PTSD and I will not let you bring any positivity in this about changelings. <laughs> Well, honestly, I can't blame him. I mean, he was brainwashed, his wife abducted. This is a weird thing for Cadence and Shining Armor in this. They always talk like high school debaters in this oh. episode. They start off with, I'm sorry. You know, sort of a, a pol- start with an apology to break the ice. I'm sorry, but I am asserting my view on this. <laughs> Just like, dude, you're, you're, you're getting close to having more character, bravo, but you can just fly off the handle a little more. I think you can do that. I will, no, no one would blame you. No and one when, would blame you if you want to find this changeling, kill him, stuff him, and mount his head on your wall. Why that much? But. Dang, dude. But still, I do understand, um, <laughs> Shining Armor's, um, anger here. But I do agree with you, Silver, that he could have played it up a bit more. But I don't know, maybe the director said to tone it down a bit? Well, Is it, it bad that I want to see a, um, how do I say, like an alternate ending to this episode where after the whole cringy, cringy song sequence that Spike's saying, they're like, yeah, we still hate changelings and burn them to the stake! Oh, wow. Ah! Now, now that Spike's gone, let's really give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But... I want to see that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Safi, you, you went into a very dark yeah. place. Yes. Bravo. Yes, I do. Isn't that what usually happens, though? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, Spike comes back to Torex telling him the bad news. But still, Spike has a plan. And said plan is to get Torex into the castle disguised as a crystal pony. And this is my favorite joke. Where Twilight spots them and introduce Torex to Twilight. The way that he introduced, or the way that Spike introduced Torex is... Reminds me of a Family Guy joke. Any of you guys remember the P tier Griffin? Oh yeah, P tier oh, Griffin. <laughs> the P tier Griffin. I think Norman's the changeling. Yeah. What could have been worse? They could have had a Norse god in the background and a battle axe. It's like, oh, this is my friend Thor <laughs> axe. Thor axe. Dang it. <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> That would be that would have been interesting. It's like, hey Thor. Oh, I... <laughs> uh, but it, uh, he's done this before, though. Spike has actually done this before. He did this before in uh, Dragon Quest when he was trying to give Princess Ember a different name. Dragon Quest? You mean uh, Gauntlet of Fire? Gauntlet of Fire. I can't remember names for the life of me. Gauntlet of Fire has literally the coolest title name ever. You should remember it. Well, okay. it, it's an episode about dragons, and my mind went to Dragon Quest. And, then... and, and really, Safi, with the references we make that go unheard, you carry no position. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't start. Don't start nothing. There won't be yeah. nothing. Um, I will start nothing over nothing. Okay. Because I am Safi. Uh, well, nothing will get you nothing. True, true. Uh, but anyway, uh, after their quick introduction. Uh, Tor, well, uh, Crystal Hoofs here says, um, he, we're pen pals. I tell my, all my crystal friends that I'm pen pals with the great and powerful Spike and they're all jelly-like. 
Yay. And they go to the Crystal uh, Empire and do a lot of stuff, like hang out autographs, tell stories and whatnot. And uh, even the guards, they say that uh, Crystal Hoof here is a funny guy, like even funnier than the Great, Ims- uh, the great Spike. Yay. And then Spike gets jelly. You never know. <laughs> But, I, th- uh, I think it's actually great that they, that Spike was able to help him uh, socialize more and whatnot, which shows you know, well, Changelings could be sociable. I mean, I mean, he, in fact, actually, what is he doing that a Changeling hasn't done before? He's disguised and pretending to be something he's not. Why don't Changelings just spend the rest of their life as you know, just a fake disguise and get love that way instead of impersonating somebody? And also, why did Thorax not think to do this sooner? It's like it should be Changeling one hundred and one. I will blend in as a Crystal Pony. Uh, he's trying to not, hey. him, but he's trying not to hurt the crystal ponies too because of how his disposition is and how nice he is and whatnot. But that's besides the point. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, when Spike goes into the castle again, he gets a call from Princess Cadence, the Crystal Empire princess, or the pretty princess as we want to call her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> triggered. The, the disappointment. Uh, but anywho. All I know is they, they let a new pony go near their daughter without even, without any way to confirm his identity. This is just asking for trouble at this you know, point. Any friend of Spike is a friend of the kingdom. You know, like, what could go wrong, right? Like, it's not like that, uh, Crystal Hoof is, uh, changing in disguise and when he goes near to... Norman, Steph- Norman, everything can go wrong. You just triggered like five death flags right there. Yeah, oh well. I mean, Murphy, Murphy, Murphy is sitting in his grave, just spinning around, laughing maniacally. You doomed, Saka. You doomed. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they really, they go from being extremely not trusting of anybody to, oh yeah, we'll just trust this person. Yeah, just ponies flip flop a lot. Yeah, true. Ponies are bipolar. My God. And well, it turns out that Crystal Hoof is a changeling. Ah, and. <sighs> Oh, what I a know, guest. Right. And, well, it seems that everybody's on the ready. And Spike couldn't really defend his friend. And Sunburst here says that um, there's no other possible explanation, right? Your friend's being kidnapped by a changeling and so on, blah, blah, blah. And he doesn't stand up for Torex. Torex are in a way saddened by this encounter and Spike feels bad about it. Hang on, hang on a tick. Because Thorax was exposed to... What was it? Five guards, two alicorns, two unicorns, and not a one of them tried to stop Thorax. I mean, you're glaring down that group. You're like, okay, is someone going to fire a containment spell or an attack spell or anybody? You were doing so well. Stop. No, he's getting away. Okay, no, you're all back to, to ineffectiveness. Well, well done. Well done, everyone. And there's a dunce head for you and a dunce hat for you and a dunce hat for you. Well, maybe they were just so shocked by the massive cojones on this changeling getting so close. Nah. Okay. It, it really, Thorax is just like any brony. The minute he's close to Flurry Heart, there's a freak out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I have to say that at least Sunburst was playing a role here. He created a containment spell around uh, Flurry Heart. So, yeah, at least one of them is doing something. One of them. Yeah. Sunburst. So Spike feels like crap def- uh, by not defending his friend, which he should be. Pretty much, yeah. I so. honestly don't remember what happened from there. <laughs> well, let's see. Well, Spike goes back to the hiding place where Thorax is sulking, but Thorax is like, fine, I'm a bad guy now. Arr, 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 arr. I don't remember that part. Oh, you should really do a recap. Uh, but sure, um, Thorax gets emo and kind of scares Spike away, and, well, Spike falls to his doom. My little pony. <laughs> nah. <clears throat> Spike is falling to his death. Nah. My little pony. No, nah, that's not true. Uh, Torex saves him, and, well, Spike says that he'll make things right. And by making things right is dragging him to the Crystal Empire castle and presenting him to the gang. <laughs> Yay, what could go wrong, right? But before we get into that, he snuck past. He snuck past all the guards. And he wasn't disguised this time. The security is laughable in this kingdom. Uh, Probably. Maybe, maybe that 
he was disguised as some kind of pocket watch. I, I don't know. I'm making things up right about now. No, 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 no. They, they just put a cardboard box <laughs> over him. It's the epitome of stealth technology. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. The, me- the Metal Gear approach. <laughs> yes. The cardboard box. <laughs> yeah. It has many tactical advantages. It's <laughs> true, that. But anyway, uh, Spike presents Torex to the royals and tell them that this changeling is my friend and he's a good changeling. And insert song here. Who here... Well, Seppi hates it. What about you, Wills? I hate it so much. You have no idea. I can't offer a lot because after a few lyrics, it's like, you know what? I, I know where this is going, but I just, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> so I sped ahead a little to just skip the saccharin. You know what's coming? I've seen, I saw enough of Twilight being swayed by the lyrics and really once you have Twilight on board, she'll be like, I'm Princess of Friendship, is Natchez. <laughs> You best do as I say. Whoop, whoop. Biznatches? Did you Biz- really just say that, Silver? For shizzle. To which I'd love <laughs> to hear Tara Strong say that. I want to hear Tara Strong say that and someone animate it. <laughs> it has to be uh, done. But what about you, Wills? When it comes down to it, uh, this song is saccharin, but I, f- I find it slightly endearing, at least, in, in my opinion. I grew up in choir my entire life, so when it comes to songs, okay. If I had to judge this song, I'd give it a C plus. It gets uh, it gets a lot of points for having heart, but its lyrics are more like a speech and not really more like a song. And it has a very simple melody, but it does have a lot of heart behind it, and that's probably the mm, point. All right. Heart. <laughs> uh, as for me, I kind of like this song. Uh, the lyrics are. Catch, no, the lyrics are corny. It's, the lyrics are not good. But the melody and Katie Westlock's vocals on this, it was really powerful when she did it. So, other than that, yeah, it was an okay song. Cringe! I'll, uh, I'll hear it again once I actually, uh, do a full-fledged review on this, but <clears throat> I can, ho- I don't feel the need to hear it right now. Understandable. <laughs> And what, 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 what will that be, Silver, next year? <laughs> oh, next ne- next decade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anywho, um, once the song's done, the Princess of Friendship goes and gives Twi- gives Spike a hug and tell that he's proud for making a new friend, even the f- even though the friend's a changeling, and offer her f- hoof in friendship. And Torex accepts, and there's a tear coming down. And everybody's in agreement because Twilight said so. And Torex joins the Crystal Empire. Yay. And oh, this is where the episode, as much as I love it, falls completely flat on a bunch of accounts. Shining Armor gets over his his resentment and frustration. Even though this this same changeling has made a mockery of his security. And, and, his, and, and his family and his... Just, just everything. I mean, the fact that he's over it so quickly is kind of sad because, you know, this was an angle I thought would be great. You know, it's just like, well, Twilight and Spike may vouch for you, but just so you know, you're on thin ice with me. That's what you'd expect, but nope, nope. Song won't be over. I'm completely cool now. That's yeah, true, but my hit canon for this one goes like after Spike and Twilight and even Starlight leaves, uh, they're going to grill Torexia, telling all the changeling secrets and how to defend himself from the changeling and whatnot, and put him on um, security or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, and, and, look, <laughs> and look how well that turned out. Yeah, that, that actually, um, you may be giving the Crystal Empire a bit too much credit, uh, Norman, due to the season finale. I'm just saying hit cannon. I'm not saying um, what they should do. I'm just saying hit cannon. We're just saying continuity smash. <laughs> Uh, you, you've been hit by continuity, bud. Sorry. It's true that. But yeah, unfortunately, all that's going to happen to the Crystal Empire is a great big fat nothing. Yep. Oh, well, but still, um, with that, uh, Starlight Grimmer tells Twilight that she's right. You can uh, find friendship lessons everywhere. And they smile. Episode ends. But we also learn, don't learn just a friendship lesson. We learn a very interesting thing about changelings. Mm-hmm. When Thorax says, is like, if I can learn how to gain love without taking it, and maybe changelings themselves could learn to share love. That right there 
was put a gigantic hole in so many headcanons, but also put a giant hole in logic problems. Okay, you're telling me this entire time no changeling has ever loved another changeling. You're kind of like internet critics. You all hate each other. (laughs) Oh, we don't all hate each other. Just because Silver picks on me doesn't mean I love him as a friend. But honestly, you have to look at the whole internet reviewer critic kind of guy because you have the angry video game nerd. You got angry Joe. You got the nostalgia critic who is very angry. You got who else? Noah and Twilight or Spoonie? And he's angry. So, there's a pattern here. You got like Kara and he's angry. Well, it's the only reviewers hey. on the internet who aren't that angry are the brony reviewers. How sad is that? Anger is a quick attachment to people. You're like, whoa, that guy's pissed. I want to see this. <laughs> How pissed does he get? Which is why you should go the Ben Yats- it's why you should go the Ben Yati Krasha uh, route of being bland indifference. I think uh, I think I would love to see a bunch of angry reviewers at a metal concert. I would love to see that just for no reason. Actually you probably you probably just see how very white they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly I'm just joking. Like anger is kind of a jump uh, platform jump to a quick reaction kind of deal. But uh, that's besides the point. So uh, final thoughts on this episode. Let's go with the same pattern. Um, Silver, what do you think, man? I think Thorax was an interesting character, but knowing now that this was just set up for the finale and the reduced role he would actually play in what is arguably his own arc. I'm jumping a little bit ahead to the finale, but here's Thorax vowing to change the changelings one day, and he's not learning the strength to do so. A pony is going to hand him the victory in essence and that's a little disappointing that in retrospect it makes this episode just a little less fun I was hoping thorax could be stronger than that but he is still likable spike it's really is a great spike episode as he owns up to a mistake and though he causes a mistake he he fixes it as well he doesn't need anyone to save him ponies were kind of superfluous at times Cadence and Shining got after Thorax is forgiven, and they're like, here, have our baby again. <laughs> it's like, okay, there's trust, and then there's being bad parents. Guess which one you are. <laughs> and we never get to see how changelings feed. I mean, gosh, I mean, we've told they've fed. It was like, what, do they just stand near you and absorb you like a, like they soak up rays from a from sunbathing? Do they, like, latch onto you like vampires and suck the love out of you? Do they stare into your eyes or what? At least they don't go with the Dracula route. Well, they have the fangs yeah. for it. Once again, at least they don't show on screen the Dracula route of yeah. feeding. Yeah, to which then it's like, oh, baby! <laughs> uh, but, that's about it, Silver? I think that'll, that'll do. Seppi, what about you? Uh, my thoughts are still kind of the same. I mean, it's a good Spike episode. I don't like Thorax, but all I can really say is it's the best episode that features the Crystal Empire. That's really all I can say about this episode. I don't really... I've never really found a reason to go back to watch it, is my, like, logic. I'm done. We don't take care of you logical types around now. Uh, and Wills, what about you, man? My thoughts when it comes to this episode is, uh, as I said before, my first impressions was a uh, love-hate. Um, I love a lot of things that does, you know, I love the fact that Changelings are back. I love that Spike got a good episode. I love that there's, you know, callbacks to previous episodes with the whole Changeling thing. And, but of course, it comes down to, I think the resolution came a bit too quick just with the song. Everyone got over their prejudices way too easily. And as Silver mentioned, um, this is basically a setup for the season finale. And even then, it felt like Thorax once you've seen the season finale and realize that he just had a two-part arc, just, uh, here's a problem, here's a solution, it kind of felt like there should have been more to that. Mm. But um, all in all, I liked it, at least. I thought it was very entertaining to see Spike be the best he can be. And after dealing with five other seasons of seeing him at his worst, it's a nice refresher. If you got a problem, he'll solve it. Check out the beat while the changeling revolves ice, it. Ice, baby. No, Norman, go to the what? corner. But, but, uh, hey, but, hey, uh, that uh, song's uh, a ripoff of Under Pressure. Ice, ice, changeling. Ding, 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 ding. Silver corner, now. <laughs> I mean, 
I'm in a circular room. There are no corners. In the corner with a bird cage. <laughs> oh wow! But anywho, as for me, this episode was an interesting one. It explores a lot about the changeling lore, but at the same time, it nips it in the butt at the same time. Fan theories out the window and starts new theory or start new questions about how do they feel, what do they do, how could a changeling be friendly and whatnot, blah blah blah. There's fanfics out there if you want. Um, it almost tells the same story but from a different point of view. I'll probably re- put it in the show notes just so you guys can read it. But other than that, this is a pretty interesting episode. Um, Spike's portrayal here has improved and I know the part where people kind of hate his actions where he doesn't stand up for Torex when he was first discovered. But you have to remember, Spike here is a kid. So when a kid is found guilty, he won't fess up to it right on the spot. But he does immediately knows that what he did was wrong and kind of tries to do the right thing. And this song, not many people like it. I'm one of those people who enjoyed it. Uh, a bit rushed, but still, this is My Little Pony. If you want to solve a problem, into song. That's how season 3 ended. Mm. <laughs> uh, but other than that, this was a pretty okay episode. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, that's about it. And, well, what else can I say? Uh, that's the episode, I guess. Um, Silver, do you have any idea what you're going to do next week? Well, since we just spent a bunch of time in the Crystal Empire, commenting on the Crystal Empire, indirectly addressing the Crystal Empire, we're going to talk about Cloudsdale. Yay! Cloudsdale's going to be fun! Oh, I can't wait to talk about... No, no. What, what, so what? Where are you going to go? Wait, let's, let's address the Crystal Empire in earnest and just go over their multiple appearances, interpretations, and what the future holds for these sparkly ponies. Ah. Yay! Sparkle Town! So basically, it's going to be the MBS show discuss the Crystal Empire Part 1. <gasps> part, part 1. Do you think that well, any of the crystal ponies who are slightly insane are literally cracked and also <laughs> mentally I, cracked? I will bring a nail and a hammer, and I will be bringing a bunch of mining carts just so I can harvest with this town and then sell all their buildings for profit. <laughs> oh, wow. That's almost as dark as Spike eating the residents. Oh, God, no. Shush! I want to sell their homes! Of course, we, we never did answer which of us is a changeling. Oh, yeah, I wonder who it is. Wait a and minute. If I'm not a changeling, and he's not a changeling, and she's and not, a not a changeling, it's the audience! Know, the, audience the audience is, is changeling! Woo! But anyway, um, we'll guys see you next week with another amazing episode. I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Silver Quill, you wretched changelings. I've been Sapphire Artsong, I guess. I don't know. I have been Will, leader of the swarm. And we'll see you guys next week. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. Doodles. You were expecting a changeling, but it was me, Dio. I told you Norman was the changeling. No, no, it was Dio.